Let's move on now to the um, famous password forgot option. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add into here um, afterwards a little paragraph and I'm going to type that Right, so we're going to do our forgot password. And we're going to create a new page called forgot. change that link and we're going to link that to that page called forgot <clears throat> okay so what first thing you're going to do within that forgot password screen is simply we're going to send an email address to our server action just dropped in a, a form group there and I'm just going to move that down the screen so we can see it properly um, let's ask the people for their username I'm going to call that email And what we're going to do is we're going to send that very basic action to a server action. So as we're going to send it, we need a button. We're going to make a submit button. We'll just have that a default size. And we'll have that as green. And we're going to say um, request because we're requesting a password change. While we're busy, let's just change that prompt, that placeholder. And this is where the fun starts, because we're going to now start looking at uh, components we haven't looked at before. We're going to change, we'll call that, I'll just call it forgot one, because that's stage one of the forgot password. We're going to pull those globals in from the forgot page. And just while we're busy, I'm just going to make that a email. And I'm just going to make it required. I'll probably do more normally, but for the moment that's going to have to do. Form, and then we're going to import from the form. Right, so where are we going next? We've got to, first of all, validate that that email exists in the system. We're going to then do a validation. Because if that isn't in our database, then we can hardly send them a password link. So our validation rule for a database will be this must exist in the database. We're looking for the email. And the link field is 
the email field within the, the table. If that exists, then we're going to look up the record. We're going to get that person's details. Top of the screen, slightly out. My apologies. I obviously just caught that. Is that better? We're going to do a database query. We're going to get our, from a, our users table, We're going to get there. I'll just get the whole lot. I've got to be honest here, folks. I'm really, I'm starting to get quite tired now. So if I make mistakes, please forgive me. Um, we're going to look up that user's details. And then we're going to send them an email. And what we're going to do is send them an email containing two things. We're going to send them an email or containing their email address and a unique hash that we're going to create from their email address and their current password. So we're going to set do a set value here. We're going to create a variable. We're going to call this hash. And what that's going to be is the Sorry, one thing I always forget about Waplow is even if there's only a single result, to be able to reveal that result, you must put it within a repeat. Sort of the mechanism that you use us to make that available. So our repeat is on our query, and our set hash now is going to be based, there's our email address. Cryptographic, SHA-256, and we're going to salt it with the password. So that's going to make a pretty unique hash, and it's going to be a 64 character long hash. And now what we need to do is to email it. So our next step after this is going to be with a mailer. We're going to set up the mailer. I'm just going to use the standard server default. And then we're going to send an email to the user. Subject, I'm just going to say password reset. Our sender will be Let's just say system. Our email will be um, no reply at data logistics uk. Just be careful there because if I get that wrong, the server won't send the email. And we're going to be send it to, I'm just going to entitle that user, and that email will be the email that they posted in. Yeah, the server default is PHP Mailer. Um, I'll be honest, I would have spent a little bit more time on that, but uh, in view of the time restraints, we're running a long way over. Um, I'm not going to, I'll not go into that. It's well documented within the forum. So create an HTML email, we're going to hit the content, and what we're going to do is just say your um, reset link. And I'm going to add a link to that. That link is going to be, I'm just going to type it in, um, is going to be, um, let's call it Resetter. I haven't created a page yet. But Resetter PHP. They're going to send two parameters. As we just discussed before, we're going to send email equals, we'll just use our normal dimension, let's say the email contents. 
and whoops hash equals that hash that we've uh, set up please don't say that I've lost that I have so grr. let's just try that again shall we phqy query email equals email and hash equals hash Yeah, well spotted. Just shows I'm getting tired. Um, really should have the full. Let Thanks for that, Theatre Geek. Um, Hopefully, I think I've got a ring there. And then the last thing we're going to do is back over to our app connect end again. We're going to make it a server connect form. That's going to be a post. Our server action will be forgot one. And then our events. Let's just add this browser in. We're going to just divert back that home page again. I know it gets a bit boring every time, but uh, this is the handy reference there. So on success, we're going to go to index PHP. Okay, let's pray that this works. Um, I'm just going to open that up in the browser. Um, Brian at data logistics dot UK. Sorry, spelling mistake. There we are. Now, hopefully. I'll be able to retrieve that email. I'm just popping over to another screen, screen briefly here. Um, I should have already have that email address already set up. There we are. That's just in a webmail page. And you see there we've got that password reset. There's our link. I'm going to click it. It's obviously going to have, give us a not found error. But you see, we've got never there. Look, email equals. That should say the email address. The hash is correct. So let's just quickly pop back into there and just have a look and see why we've got that. Yeah, we should actually be in there. We should be saying dollar post email. I'm just going to quickly try that again. No magic bytes. I haven't created a reset a PHP page yet. Um, I'm going to do that in a moment. I just wanted to get things done a stage at a time. Okay, we've done that. Let's just pop back into our webmail. Let's 
There we see we've got a click now. Email links buying at datalogistics.uk and we've got that hash. So, nearly down to the final hurdle, I'm pleased to say. Um, last thing is to create that resetter page. And most of this, as you'll know, is pretty much, excuse me, pretty much followed the tutorials that are already on the um, forum. This password reset stage, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm not saying it's better, but it's just, I think it's a learning opportunity. We'll look at a different way of doing the password reset. So let's pop in there. We're going to uh, create a new file here, a PHP file. Uh, we called it resetter.php. Now this page is going to be called from an external link. So the first thing we need to do is define the query parameters that are going to be required. So the parameters we're going to be pass, passing to it is email and hash. But rather than uh, do it in the way that Theodore showed in uh, his thing where we have a, an input, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use that hash as a temporary login token. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, I'm going to just pop away from App Connect back into Server Connect here. And what I'm going to do is start a new server action called forgot to that's going to have two parameters sent to it as get parameters it's going to be email and hash what we're going to do is we're going to use the hash in the email in a way that we can Actually, I'm just going to have this. I'm, I'm just going to have to have a quick look at my notes here because uh, right. So we, we've got our two variables passed. Our first step we're going to do is, as always, we're going to have our database connection. It's going to be good. And now, now we're going to validate so I just pl pl please bear with me one moment. I'm looking at the wrong screen here. Then we're going to add our security provider in. And then we're going to run a database query. And that database query is going to get us the details of The user who is has the email address that has been sent. So we're going to users. We'll just get all the information for the moment because um, I'm doing this on, as quickly as I can. And the users email equivalent to how the the email that has been sent through. Yes, damn right I could do with a beer. So, okay, we've we've now queried that database. We've sent it an email address and we've queried the database and got the user's details. We do not want that to be output at this stage. We want to keep that within server level. We're now going to create a repeat. And that repeat expression is going to be based on that query. 
That just it basically exposes our information there. <laughs> can, can I just say, if Heineken made wives, that's definitely the one that I've got. Bless her. She just forgot the bottle opener. Right, so, right, that's, that's invigorated me a little. Um, we've got our repeat. I'm going to add now a condition in there. Our condition is going to be... I'm going to type this in manually, because it's a, a little bit... No, I'll not. We'll do... Let's... We're going to basically recreate that hash and compare it with the hash that we already have. So we're going to start with email, cryptographic, SHA-256, password. Remember that's exactly the methodology we used before to create the hash that's been sent. But in this case, because it's an operation, we're going to say is equal to the hash that's been passed. So this stage here, just it's really important you understand exactly what it does. I'm just going to open this out a little bit. We've basically recreated our hash that's uh, within the system. <laughs> yes, uh, de definitely beer, beer is the answer. Right, so we've got our condition. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start setting just a couple of little flags. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly change, uh, create a session variable here. And I'm going to call that session val, val is retval. Short for return value. So if that condition is met, then we can, act, so we can say yes. The hash that's sent is definitely the valid hash for that e email user. Therefore, we know that it's it's uh, the right information's been sent. And so, at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set session ret val. I'm going to set that value to the value of zero. Sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to set that to value of 1. My apologies. What that's basically going to do is when that's returned back from the server action, that's going to tell us that that validation was correct. And having done that, we can then actually just go straight ahead and we can do a security login. And that security login we can log in on the value of the uh, the values that we've actually retrieved in that previous query. Don't forget that password on this occasion is actually previous is already encrypted, so we don't need to encrypt it again. So what we've done is we've used the token, the hash that we've sent and the email to, first of all, the email looks up the person's details. Then we then check that the hash matches what the hash should be. And if they do, we just say, you know what, we're just going to log you in. Obviously, if that's not the case, if that hash didn't match, then we're just going to set that session value, retval. To zero. Just need to make sure that those that actually that doesn't need to be output at this stage. So all we need to do now is to uh, return that value back to um, App Connect. So I'm just going to use a set value stage here, and we'll call that hash OK. We'll use that as a flag to tell us whether that hash value that was sent was OK. And we will set that to the value of that session value, return value. And of course, we need to output that. So now in a situation where uh, at the end of that 
server action, a hash and an email has been passed. We've checked from that email that the hash is correct for that particular email address. We then returning as one to say that was correct, hash was correct and we've logged the user in. Otherwise we're returning zero to tell the um, app connect end that that was an invalid hash that's been sent. Okay, so the last thing that need to do now is to uh, pop over to App Connect. We can uh, go to our dynamic events server actions and our success event. And remember, at this point, um, all that will be passed back from the server action will be either a zero or a one, depending on success or not. However, if it is success, the user will currently be logged in. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a browser component. I want to say go to. And then on this, we're going to use that variable that's passed back. So we're going to say server connect one dot data dot hash. OK. So that's our variable that we've got passed from the server connection. We're going to test it to see if it is a value of one. If it is a value of one, we're going to go to index.php. And if it's an error, we would normally send it to some sort of uh, invalid page. But for the purpose of this, we'll just send it to the login page. Just make sure we get with that spelling mistake. So what we should happen is basically this page is never really going to appear. It's just going to divert to one of two places. It's going to divert to index PHP where we can uh, then use the password reset function that we added earlier, or it will take us to a login page. So let's save that. Webmail on that. We've got our password reset function there. I'm just going to drag this off the screen so it doesn't confuse things. No, actually, what I'll put it back. Uh, click on that reset link. What we see is it detects that that hash was correct. It's logged us in and it has taken us to the home page. Just to prove that's work, now I'm actually going to log out and I'm just going to re click that link there and you'll see that it has in fact logged us in and then we could go into the reset password function and reset the password from there. So uh, that's everything I wanted to cover today. Thank you for joining me and uh, hopefully see you next week.